Here's Ben Shapiro to once again be wrong about health care. On Sunday, Senator Bernie Sanders took to Twitter to deliver one of his usual messages. People go to the doctor because they're sick, get a diagnosis from their doctor, but they can't afford the treatment, he wrote. How crazy is that? So I responded snarkily, I go to a fancy store to check out a piece of furniture and I can't afford it. Totally crazy. This, of course, prompted spasms of apoplexy on the left. How could I dare to compare medical care to furniture? Was I equating the two? Was I suggesting that the necessity of furniture was somehow comparable to the necessity of medical care? Of course not, because that would be stupid. Then why did you bring it up? Clearly you think these things have something to do with one another. Bernie's point is that the richest country on the planet not providing health care to its citizens who need it is absurd to him. It seems as though you think that providing health care and providing furniture would be equally absurd. If that's not your point, then what point were you making? I was pointing out that medical care is a commodity, and that in life, we are often faced with commodities we cannot afford. Yes, but there are many things that are so important that we consider it unacceptable to allow people to go without them simply because they cannot afford them. Not everyone can afford private schools, so we provide public ones. We provide public roads, so people who can't afford to pay tolls can use them too. Do you believe there should be no public infrastructure whatsoever? Do you believe that wanting health care to be part of public infrastructure is comparable to wanting free furniture to be part of it? But this mere observation caused a ruckus on the left. Necessities don't compare to luxuries, said one angry tweeter. Bless characters like Ben Shapiro for demonstrating the complete soullessness of capitalist ideology, tweeted another. The idea here seems to be that unless you declare medical care a right rather than a commodity, you're soulless. I'm an atheist, so I suspect everyone is soulless. But Ben, in addition to being soulless, is also an asshole. That as Marx might put it, necessity, rather than autonomy, creates rights. Yeah, I don't agree with that. The only definition of a right that seems to have any practical consequence is that a right is something a community commits to providing and at least somewhat successfully provides, or a liberty it commits to protecting and does at least somewhat successfully protect. Currently, Canadians have a right to health care, but Americans do not. If a community makes and fulfills a commitment to providing something or protecting a liberty, that provision or liberty is in every practical and consequential sense a right. This is foolish, both morally and practically. Morally. You have no right to demand medical care of me. I may recognize your necessity, I may offer charity. My friends and I may choose to band together and fund your medical care, but your necessity does not change the basic math. Medical care is a service and a good provided by a third party. No matter how much I need bread, I do not have a right to steal your wallet or hold up the local bakery to obtain it. Do you believe your fellow Americans have a moral right to demand fire department services from you? You are paying for the fire department regardless of whether you use their services. Do you believe that to be immoral? Theft may end up being the least immoral choice under the circumstances, that doesn't make it a moral choice, or suggest that I have not violated your rights in pursuing my own needs. If it's the least immoral choice, then shouldn't it still be the choice that's made? If this is intended as an analogy for public health care, and public health care is a less immoral choice than private health care, then why shouldn't we choose public health care over private? But the left thinks that declaring necessities rights somehow overcomes the individual rights of others. If your community or country doesn't recognize a right, then in what meaningful sense can you say you have it? What would be the difference between living in a country that doesn't recognize a right and living in a country in which you don't have that right at all? There doesn't seem to me to be any discernible difference. If you're sick, you now have the right to demand that my wife, who is a doctor, care for you. Is that what Ben thinks happens in a country with universal health care? Does he think that, for example, here in Canada, we can just demand care from unwilling doctors? That's not how our system works, Ben. Doctors who don't want to practice are free to quit anytime they like. Is there any limit to this right? Do you have the right to demand that the medical system provide life-saving care forever to the tunes of millions of dollars of other people's taxpayer dollars or services? Yeah, and it's awesome. I love it. How exactly can there be such a right without the government rationing care? As long as there is scarcity, rationing will always occur. In the U.S., rationing is done by the insurance companies rather than the government, but it is rationing nonetheless. The question is who does it and on what basis? I personally think that care should be rationed according to need, as decided by the triage system, rather than ability to pay. Or using compulsion to force individuals to provide it. Or confiscating mass sums of wealth to pay for it. The answer, nope. Doesn't work that way. It works that way in Canada. Rights that derive from individual need inevitably violate individual autonomy. All rights limit individual autonomy. If I have a right to not be punched, then your autonomy to swing your fist stops where my nose begins. In response to my tweet, my colleague New York Magazine's Jesse Single wrote, quote, free markets are good at some things and terrible at others, and it's silly to view them as ends rather than means. That's not true. Free markets are expressions of individual autonomy, and therefore they are ends to be pursued in and of themselves. 
Expressions of individual autonomy conflict with one another, and therefore some have to be prioritized over others. Since being bankrupted by medical bills, or just dying from going without care, is a greater impediment to someone's autonomy than rich folks being taxed more to pay for everyone's treatment is an impediment to their autonomy, people who value individual autonomy should choose the latter option. Now practically, declaring medical care a right doesn't make it actually happen. No, but declaring it a right and actually providing it does. Just as Ruth Bader Ginsburg said at one point, she would model new constitutions on the South African Constitution, which guarantees, quote, everyone has the right to have access to health care services, including reproductive health care. The state must take reasonable legislative and other measures within its available resources to achieve the progressive realization of each of these rights. That's what the South African Constitution says. But the World Health Organization ranks South Africa somewhere near the bottom of the globe in terms of medical care. Do you think that's merely because they try to guarantee it? Or do you think maybe there might be some other pretty significant differences between the American and South African economies that might also have something to do with that? Do you really think that if the U.S. were to attempt the same thing, it couldn't get results that are any better? What happened? Why didn't the right self-actualize? Well, a big reason is because they have a fraction of the GDP per capita that the countries where it is effectively actualized have. Because medical care is a commodity, and if you treat it differently, that's stupid. Mercenaries can also be treated as a commodity. Is it therefore stupid to have a nationalized military? To make a commodity cheaper and better, you need two things, profit incentive and freedom of labor. So we'd get a cheaper and better military if we privatized the whole thing, right? I'm not convinced that's the case. Even if the quality of care in the U.S. is greater than the quality of care in other countries, which is debatable, that high-quality care is so inaccessible that the U.S. has a much higher rate of mortality due to causes amenable to health care than any other comparable country. If a country can't achieve high-quality care without compromising accessibility to such a degree that its mortality rate from health care amenable conditions is higher than every other comparable country, then that doesn't seem like a worthwhile trade-off to me. The government destroys both of these things in the healthcare industry. It decides medical reimbursement rates for millions of Americans Americans, particularly poor Americans. This, in turn, creates an incentive for doctors not to take government-sponsored health insurance. Which is why it's better for the government to pay the doctors directly rather than paying them through the health insurance companies or directly out of the patient's pocket. So, what's the solution for poor people? Well, not to declare medical care a right. Certainly not to dismiss reliance on the market as some sort of perverse cruelty. Markets are the solution in medical care, just as they are in virtually every other area. Show me a market with a private health care system that works better than the current American system, and that evidence would convince me. Without that evidence, I remain skeptical. If you treat medical care as a commodity, that means temporary shortages, and it means some people won't get everything we wish they would have. But that's also true, but worse, with government-sponsored medical care, as the most honest advocates will admit. That's why I prefer to be government-run rather than merely government sponsored. And whereas government sponsored medical care requires a top down approach that violates individual liberties, generates over demand and quashes supply, markets prize individual liberties. They reduce demand. You don't demand more of what you have to pay for. If market demand is reduced while need remains, that doesn't solve the problem of need. And they heighten supply through profit incentive. So, back to the furniture now. Let's say your life depended on this choice today. You either have to obtain an affordable chair or an affordable x ray. Which would you choose to obtain? Well, if you're not stupid, you choose the chair. That's because there are lots of types of chairs produced by scores of different companies, widely distributed. You could buy a $15 folding chair or $1,000 antique without the slightest difficulty. By contrast, to obtain an x-ray, you'd have to work with your insurance company, wait for an appointment, and then haggle over price. Why? Because the medical market is way more regulated. Well, even then, it would depend on why my life depended on such a bizarre choice. In what scenario would choosing a chair be more likely to save your life than purchasing an x-ray? Also, you don't have to haggle over prices for x-rays in Canada. If you need an x-ray, you just go to the hospital and get one. You don't have to futz with any insurance company. You don't even get a bill. Thanks to the widespread perception that healthcare is a right, then the chair market. Does that sound soulless? True soullessness is depriving people of the choices they require because you're more interested in patting yourself on the back by inventing rights than by incentivizing the creation of goods and services. In healthcare, we could use a lot less virtue signaling and a lot less government. Or we could just read Bernie Sanders' tweets while we wait in line for a government-sponsored surgery, dying, presumably, in a decrepit chair. I'd rather be waiting in a line in which my place in that line is decided by the urgency of my need rather than my ability to pay. I'd be far less likely to die in such a line. And if I had to choose between the somewhat longer wait times I get in Canada and the insurance prices I'd have to pay in the States, I would take the wait every time.